The idea that the patent system is broken is based on two key observations. The first observation is that the number of patent applications filed around the globe is increasing steadily. The second observation is that the number of court cases involving these patents is increasing at an even higher rate. Now there are two factors that explain the recent growth in patent applications around the world. The first one is that there are more and more countries that used to be production-based and now move to a knowledge-driven economy such as South Korea or China. These countries traditionally didn't develop technologies that needed patent protection, but nowadays these countries are trying to protect their technologies around the globe. This drives up the number of patent applications. However, even accounting for this fact, there is another reason and another observation that can explain why the number of patents are increasing steadily. And this observation is that companies are filing more patents per R&D dollar spent nowadays than they used to do in the past. That means, given the same amount of R&D spent, they file more patent rights. Now you might wonder, what is driving this increase in the propensity to file patents given the same level of R&D activity? And there the answer is that patents nowadays are used more strategically than a decade or 20 years ago. The two reasons why this happens is that first, in court cases, the awards that uh, patent enforcement can get a company are increasing dramatically so that damage payments are increasing which makes it more attractive for companies to obtain patents in the first place. The second observation is that more and more products become complex in their nature. Complex here means that a product involves a lot of technologies that might be out of the possession of a single company. Take a smartphone for example. To manufacture a smartphone like this, you need to obtain the technology for LCD screens and the touchscreen technology, but that's not all. You also need to obtain the right to use wireless data transmission standards such as 3G or Wi-Fi standards. You need to have the antennas, you need to obtain technology for batteries and power management and so forth. There is no single company in this market that possesses all the relevant technologies to manufacture an end product like this. In these situations, companies therefore need to obtain licenses. And they often obtain licenses from competing companies. Take Apple and Samsung as an example. Apple needs to obtain licenses from Samsung to manufacture the iPhone. And at the same time, Samsung needs to obtain licenses from Apple to be able to manufacture their competing mobile phones. In order to resolve these potential issues here, these companies are often obtaining cross licenses, granting each other the right to use their patents without having to fear any litigation court cases. This is not only true for Apple and Samsung, these are only examples, there are much more examples where companies strike these cross licensing negotiations. Now when it comes to how are these negotiations done, it turns out that the actual size of the, of the patent portfolio is one of the major determinants of the terms that can be obtained in these cross-licensing agreements. The bigger one company's patent portfolio is, the better the terms are going to be that they can achieve in these negotiations. This obviously creates an incentive for these companies to increase and to maximize the size of their own patent portfolio. As all these companies are doing this, you can argue these companies are in a race for the biggest patent portfolio. And this is comparable to a prisoner's dilemma that is self-perpetuating. This is a major explanation why we observe the increase in patent filings around the globe. In my recent research, I'm analyzing the effects of these situations on the behavior of firms. One of the findings we obtain is that the racing behavior is more pronounced in industries where the products are complex, meaning that they involve a variety of different technologies, while the racing behavior is lower in products that are based on single or a small number of technologies, such as in pharmaceuticals. This is not surprising, but there is also an effect on how firms resolve conflict in these situations. In my most recent project, I'm looking at the way companies attack each other or trying to resolve conflict around these issues. And what we find there is that companies that are mutually dependent are less likely to attack each other than companies that are not dependent. That means companies that need to obtain cross licenses from each other do not attack each other, whereas companies that don't have any patents that are relevant for the production of a particular product gets attacked much more aggressively. While this is not surprising, it's much less risky to attack someone who can't defend itself. It has important implications both for managers and policymakers. 
From a managerial perspective, if you're active in an industry where products are based on a multitude of different technologies, the size of the patent portfolio becomes an important determinant of your competitive position. Whereas for policymakers, they need to be concerned that large players in these industries might threaten potential entrants out of competition. And this is an important aspect because as we all know, much innovation is coming from small companies. And even Apple once started as a startup.